Hello and welcome to the second video of Celestial Standards. In this video, we will talk about one of our major standards, sexual purity, also known as chastity. This standard is one that really separates us from today's world, where chastity is ignored and even ridiculed by many. We will explore why sexual purity is important, how to live Lord chastity to the fullest, and the blessings that come from living this divine law. And just a word of caution to anyone watching with younger ones, this video might go a bit deep. So let's start with the big question of why is chastity important? Well, in order to really understand the importance of chastity, we first need to understand its sister law, which is God's law of families. This is perhaps best contained in the family proclamation, which states, We the First Presidency and the Council of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints solemnly proclaim that marriage between a man and a woman is ordained of God and that the family is central to the Creator's plan for the eternal destiny of his children. The proclamation also states, We further declare that God has commanded that the sacred powers of procreation are to be employed only between man and woman, lawfully wedded as husband and wife. From this, we immediately see that the reason why chastity is, import is so important is because family is central to the plan of salvation. And if procreation is misused, it violates God's plan for these families and in turn can lead to difficulty in the upbringing of an individual's life. It also shows deep disrespect to the sacred powers of procreation, which God has entrusted us with. For the strength of youth, a guide for making choices gives further insight into the importance of sexual purity. It states, sexual feelings are an important part of God's plan to create happy facts marriages and eternal families. These feelings are not sinful, they are sacred. Because sexual feelings are so sacred and so powerful, God has given you his law of chastity to prepare you to use these feelings as he intends. The law of chastity states that God approves of sexual activity only between a man and a woman who are married. Many in the world ignore or even mock God's law, but the Lord invites us to be his disciples and live a standard higher than the world's. There are many ways in which we can violate the law of chastity. Sexual sins are often referred to in the scriptures as whoredoms. One of the Ten Commandments specifically forbids adultery which means a sexual affair between a married and an unmarried pair, which can lead to much relationship damage and heartbreak. Another primary sexual sin is fornication, which is sexual activity between unmarried individuals. This is especially common in today's world, in which marriage is no longer seen as important. However, God's standard on the importance of marriage and chastity is unchanging. In addition, we also have sex perversion, which is using sex for purposes in which it is not intended. Sexual sins are very diverse and they cannot all be covered, but these are some of the most common forms in which it happens. All of the scriptures condemn sexual sin, but the Book of Mormon perhaps states most clearly the seriousness of these sins. The prophet Alma said to his son Corianton, who had committed a sexual sin, Know ye not that, that these things are an abomination in the sight of the Lord? Yea, the most abominable above all sins, save it be the shedding of innocent blood, or denying of the Holy Ghost. The prophet Jacob also emphasised the importance of chastity to the Nephites, and stated, Woe unto those who commit whoredoms, for they shall be thrust down to hell. Even today, our living prophet, Russell M. Nelson, 
also emphasises the importance of chastity. He said in a recent conference address, Many of the adversary's most relentless temptations involve violations of moral purity. The power to create life is the one privilege of Godhood that Heavenly Father allows his mortal children to exercise. Thus, God set clear guidelines for the use of this living divine power. Physical intimacy is only for a man and woman who are married to each other. Much of the world does not believe this, but public opinion is not the arbiter of truth. The Lord has declared that no unchaste person will attain the celestial kingdom. So, when you make decisions regarding morality, please think celestial. And if you have been unchaste, I plead with you to repent. Come unto Christ and receive his promise of complete forgiveness as you fully repent of your sins. Even though sexual sins are serious, it is still perfectly possible to truly repent from them through the atonement of Jesus Christ. However, the law of chastity requires more than simply refraining from sexual sins. Jesus Christ said, You have heard that it was said by them of all time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. This means we also need to refrain from any lustful thoughts or desires. Lust is a powerful emotion, but, just like any other negative emotion, it can be overcome. Experiencing sexual emotions is not a sin, but rather entertaining or acting upon them is. Preoccupation with lustful thoughts and desires is commonly referred to as lasciviousness in the scriptures, though nowadays we tend to call it dirty-mindedness. Remember the consequences that King David faced due to entertaining lustful emotions. The Lord has warned that lust leads to loss of the spirit, even to the denying of the faith. In order to avoid triggering lustful thoughts, we should do all we can to avoid anything that purposely arouses them. A major hurdle in today's world is pornography, which is anything, especially media or literature, that is sexual or describes the body in an inappropriate nature. Pornography is addictive and degrading, though sadly it is all too common and, and accepted in our society as entertainment. Lust can also lead to another sexual sin, which is masturbation. Although viewed as healthy by the world, it is addictive and increases sexual desire, and as such is forbidden by the Lord. In regards to maintaining moral cleanliness, the, for the strength of youth states, keep sex and sexual feelings sacred. They should not be the subjects of jokes or entertainment. Outside of marriage between a man and a woman, it is wrong to touch the private, sacred parts of another person's body, even if clothed. In your choices about what you do, look at, read, listen to, think about, post or text, avoid anything that purposely arouses lustful emotions in others or yourself. This includes pornography in any form. If you find that situations or activities make temptation stronger, avoid them. You know what those situations and activities are. And if you aren't sure, the spirit, your parents and your leaders can help you know. Show your father in heaven that you honour and respect the sacred power to create life. An important part of the law of chastity is respecting the body which God has given us. We call this attitude modesty. Disrespecting the body or using it in a way to gain lustful attention from others is a sin. There are many ways in which we can practice modesty. We need to be modest in our dress. In today's world, clothing that uses the body to gain inappropriate attention is very common and trendy. 
However, true disciples honour the sanctity of their bodies. We should respect the body in our speech by avoiding dirty jokes or language. We should also be modest in our behaviour by avoiding any action that purposely stimulates lustful emotions in others. For example, inappropriate dancing. The Apostle Paul emphasised the importance of respecting the body in his epistle to the Corinthians, in which he said, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, which temple ye are. Because marriage between a man and woman is ordained of God, and important to the family, same-sex relationships are not in harmony with the law of chastity. However, those who experience same-sex attraction and do not act on them are not guilty of sin. For the strength of youth states, feeling same-sex attraction is not a sin. If you have these feelings and do not pursue or act on them, you are living Heavenly Father's sacred law of chastity. You are a beloved child of God and the disciple of Jesus Christ. Remember that the Saviour understands everything you experience. Through your covenant connection with him, you will find strength to obey God's commandments and receive the blessings he promises. Trust him and his gospel. Sexual abuse of others is a tragic sin and is often caused by individuals who immerse themselves in all manner of lasciviousness. However, victims of such behaviour are not guilty or accountable because they have not misused their agency. For the strength of youth clarifies this, saying, being a victim of any abuse or assault does not make you guilty of sin. Please do not feel guilt or shame. The Saviour loves you. He wants to help you heal you and give you peace. Professional counsellors, your family members and your leaders can also help. Beautiful blessings are bestowed upon those who live God's law of chastity in its fullness. For the strength of youth explains, living law of chastity brings God's approval and personal spiritual power. When you are married, this law will bring greater love, trust and unity to your marriage. Obeying this law will make it possible for you to progress eternally and become more like your Heavenly Father. Your confidence will grow as you live as a disciple of Jesus Christ. I have definitely felt these blessings as I have strived to be sexually pure. I have often noticed that chaste relationships, not founded upon lust, are happy and lasting relationships, whereas those which are founded upon lust crumble just like a house built on a sandy foundation. Being sexually pure is an essential part of being temple worthy. One temple recommend question directly asks, the Lord has said that all things are to be done in cleanliness before him. Do you strive for moral cleanliness in your thoughts and behaviour? Do you obey the law of chastity? Living the law of chastity is especially important for a temple recommend, since we specifically covenant to obey it in the temple. Sadly, the world today tramples the law of chastity under its feet. Very few live chaste lives, and many indulge in all kinds of immorality and whoredoms, delighting in lust and calling chastity bondage or even politically incorrect. Many even try to fight against this gospel principle. However, those who live clean and chaste lives in a filthy and unchaste world will have access to power from heaven and are given this promise. And if you keep my commandments and endure to the end, you shall have eternal life, which gift is the greatest of all the gifts of God. May we all have the courage to be valiant in the testimony of Christ, in defending truth and chastity, and 
honouring and sustaining the family. This is my witness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.